Welcome to Sneakers and Stogies. I also got somebody here with me. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Sneakers and Stogies. Welcome back, welcome back. Episode three of this season. Bruh, we missed so much in the last month. We have. We really have. But y'all, we deserve a break too. Like, nah, facts. Yeah, especially after everything we've been doing. Actually, like we told y'all, our lives be like. So, before we get started on the show, and I just want to make sure I had to readjust the show from the original time. And the title, episode title name is, Can We Catch a Break or No? According to y'all, no. No, no, we can't catch a break. Like, life has been <laughs> life and it has been a shit show and a half. I agree. So, let's start off with, you know, a brief introduction. You know, we ain't seen Damo in a while, you know. That's when y'all saw me, I was 30. Are you 31? 30 plus 1. 31. 30 plus 1. 30 plus 1. 31. 30 again. 30, same time round. But no, like, tell people how you been, because everybody don't know. People don't know how you been. They didn't know you from behind the camera. Oh, okay. Well, you guys know, been looking on my rounds. Uh, I'll say I'm pretty good. Good enough. Um, life has been going pretty good. I've actually been doing really good. Work is going good. Um, mental is all good. Physical could be better. But, you know, I'm doing pretty good. What about you? I mean, Ari. Oh, wow. Right, because I'm gonna bleep. Yeah, bleep it out. Bleep Sorry. It out. How about you? Ooh, it's, been a roll- it's been a roller coaster ride and a half. It's been everything under the sun and then some. Honestly and truthfully, I'm glad you're doing the show today because the last few days have been eh, and I did not need the camera see me being eh. I understand. I'm looking at you. Exactly. And you, <laughs> I'll let you have that one. I'm, I'm a nicer person, so I'm gonna let you have that one. I'm gonna let you slide. But other than that, we didn't get to do this what I wanted to do. So the main reason I really wanted you to host this show because I really wanted you to do it for your birthday because I was trying to get you something for your birthday. I know I ain't right, but no, that too. But no, the tick came Monday, but I also wanted you to host the show anyway because I wanted to get you something for your birthday. But I'll reschedule it before later. Oh, I thought you meant like you got me a gift. No, I really, like, was, I was really trying to get you a gift, but my job took forever for me to get. I said, are these mine? <laughs> That's besides the point. Uh, so the next time you're here, hopefully I have something for you for your birthday. But we do appreciate you here on Steve and Stogies, especially since you know had a whole big birthday and you made the best of it, especially made the best of it. And everybody came and showed love to you. And we Yeah, my housewarming slash birthday. Um, I thought you meant big, like how my birthday was last year. No, no, you know I couldn't make it last year. Yeah, no, last year was big. Yeah. Um, no, this year I actually like honed it down a lot from what I used. You know, usually I go on a trip. Oh, yeah. I do it big for my birthday, but like 30 plus one. Um, and it, it's crazy too, because I'm actually in a way better financial place than I've ever been in my life. But I just, for some reason, I just didn't want to go out. And this is about to start a whole new topic that's not on our list. But Houston to me is not fun anymore when it comes to like going to the clubs or doing stuff like that. Like it's really not fun anymore. So you see what I've been seeing for years. Somebody that's been Not here. for years. <laughs> for years. But I say that because I told when I went to Atlanta in the summer, I told people that Atlanta is the more show off Houston. But now when everybody coming to Houston is trying to cut people to Atlanta and we don't need that. Houston had its own subtlety and its own movement. That's why they're trying to get the fuck out of Houston for every now and then so I can mm-hmm. catch a break from it. Because it's like, I didn't want to get a section at the address because I just felt like it's not worth the money. It's been I played out. I didn't want to do Chapman and Kirby because everybody does Chapman and Kirby. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my friends literally going to be here there this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, Got me coming outside again. Don't, didn't want to go to a door. Shout out to the people at the door. But right. I just didn't. I just... I just didn't want to. Like, it just wasn't. No, no I completely understand. Especially... I'm well, stationed out. Especially when Bell Station low key be the win now, but yeah, Bell Station is definitely always a vibe. Like I'm, I'm always down to go to Bell Station, but just for my birthday, like you know, my friends usually fly out here. I just was not. I just yeah, y'all stay home. Uh, thanks. We all need a break, especially. Yeah, and then the money that I was gonna spend for that, like now I'm going to Honeyland. So see, that's good. At least you, yeah, because we're supposed to go to Atlanta. And... Yeah, but now I'll have footage for Honeyland. Thank you. So be, Thank you. It'll be shot on my phone. Hey, that's fine. You could take the account and go look for it. That's all I have footage for. Uh, Ooh. Can we even put that on YouTube? Yes, we can. Well, y'all, 
can. Yes, we can. And especially giving them a shout out because, you know, we take all the appreciation, especially from the small crowds. And speaking of Johnson Cabaret, not, not the cabaret itself, but just the wild freakiness of it all. I dig up, remember I told you about the Chanel on there, right? Yes. I saw, I was kind of upset when I saw that. But she like, if I go through my phone and show you what I really like. Yeah, and then I'm going to walk out of the show. You're going to walk out? And I, I'd rather say that for the yeah, end. So it's like, I don't dance, I just want... But here's the plot twist. I paid VIP, and I was- You had VIP tickets? I had VIP tickets. This is what you could've got me for my birthday, you know. <laughs> Do you, that, was, <laughs> that was my last 200. <laughs> like, you don't understand what I went through to get those tickets. What'd you do? I was already here, about to go there early. I had to speed back home, in traffic. Go from my house. Sleep in the car, by the way. Yeah, no, people sleep. I don't- Thanos Prime Thanos, I'm sorry, yeah, see, now I feel bad. Thanos Prime, shout out to Thanos Prime, well, you know, go show to him, he got more videos coming out soon. But I literally had him sleep in the car. I drove from his house, back streets to my house, drove from there to Bayou Music Center, and made it there right before the VIP closing ended at 6.30. Because I left my wallet at home. I was trying to make it on time for that. Got my pass. No, 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 you don't know what I went through to get the tickets, though. But no, the crazy part about it, and like I said, this is off topic for the show. Yeah, this is definitely not what we, but you know, well, podcast. We, exactly, you gotta have fun with it. Um, tell me why I was that close to the stage that you saw in the photo, mm -hmm. but I didn't show that she actually got off the stage and walked through the crowd. Did she touch you? Ew, <laughs> let's get on to the show. Nah, well, you watched Lipstick Lover, right? You watched the video, right? Mm -hmm. She, those were the dancers that were in the show. Oh, did she have the same dancers? She had the same. So most of her, one of her other dancers that was on there actually was recording video from the show, and I made in a bunch of the videos that she recorded off her phone. Oh, that's dumb. So, and then shout out to Candid Kev, because, you know, Kev was there doing uh, photography, and he didn't recognize me because I lost so much weight. Mm -hmm. But we could reconnect, and I'm trying to get back into the concert scene. So it's going to take a little time, but shout out to Candid Kev for that. Oh yeah, shout out to him. But yeah, no, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the photos later. Like she did do a reveal and just know that I got that video and I was that's the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> you probably just like I'm holding on to the Tiana Taylor video still. I'll be one day. I didn't then don't hate me, but I didn't listen to the album to the day of because I wanted to go in. And she got me through a lot the last month of teaching. So I really enjoyed the album and the band gave me the set list for the show. I really cherish that so it brought me peace in my own mind right now. So, Janelle Monet does look good, Jesse. But let's get back to the show. Yes. So, originally, when we were supposed to shoot an episode, I decided to go unscripted. And I did a live stream on Fortnite. You'll see it on YouTube. It's on there. But I did the first half of the show unscripted so that way I wouldn't lose focus while playing the game with Thanos Prime. Second half of the show, when you see the full video, we just randomly talking. So I might go back to Twitch since I got another job and I'm working at home. Here, so we're gonna try that as well. So that's why I was freaking out when I came because I wanted to make sure everything was set here and set there as well. No, I understand. And so we're gonna try to do that so that way we can have more shows out for people. And I decided to bring up the surprise I wanted to do because originally the day we were supposed to film, I was originally gonna give you those three calls. Well, you forced me to take them off because I had to get ready for my fucking exam that I fucking failed, but that's not here nor there. Yeah, and I have a big event this Friday with my job, like, that I'm, like, the head of planning, so I've been no, no, no. stressed. Yeah, you've been stressed in. That's why I want to at least do not every week, but every other week. Yeah, I can do that. So that way it's much more flexible for our schedule, so that way we can get back to it. And now that you see how far I live. Oh, fuck yo. You live farther than rookie. <laughs> like, cuz, I passed up his exit which is 757 to go to 747 like nah bruh nah you i love you and i i cherish you as a sister but now y'all understand why sometimes i just can't make this drive. you can't do it and i respect it but we got some more stuff to talk about one later in the show mm -hmm. about that but to start off and i'm going to script this on the show let's start off with what we've been missing since we've been gone so you heard about the winning time show, the LA, you know, LA show got canceled, right? At the, At the wrong time. Like, the show was actually good. It got canceled right when the, uh, the strike ended. Yes, and that's the worst and part. The strike is the main reason why. Like, uh, the strike is the main reason why we're getting a lot of shit later now, especially. But don't get me wrong, I stand with the writers and the actors, don't get me wrong. But if you're gonna cancel the show, make it a better reason than that. Like, 
picture is not. Well, the ratings were like. This is the crazy part. HBO Max. Well, it's not HBO Max anymore. Max. Mm -hmm. They canceled it because of ratings and the writing and all that. But show was coming back. There are so many people that are diehard fans of that show that didn't even know season two was out. And see, I found out randomly on Twitter, so I understand. I found out when I logged on to Max and oh hey, like season two's up. Like y'all didn't. Y'all, and I I pay for ads. Like, there was no, they, they didn't push no money behind it. And that's the worst part. Like, if you're going to cancel a good show that people are at least put some money behind it. So my question is, are they still going to do the spinoff? The winning time spinoff about the Clippers and about the whole situation with, uh, what's that name? The coach. The coach that's... Oh, yeah. I don't know. Because they're doing the show about that. They're gonna they probably will put more money in the deck because that could be more of a... That's more, so think about this. If you notice during the writer's strike that they've been doing a lot of documentaries. And reality shows because that's all you don't need writers for that. Exactly, and so if they don't make it a actual show but make it like a documentary, then that would make more sense. Mm -hmm. But since the writers are back and the actors are not, you could still kind of get away with that. So what are your thoughts about the winning time thing? Like, are you sad that the show? This is my theory. I could be wrong, but a lot of good shows that got canceled during the writing strike, I feel like they get picked back up. But How many times was... the game has been picked up? The game's been picked up so many guys. They just canceled it again. It was bad. Oh, yeah, it was bad. On Paramount Plus. I had watched it. How was that? It's really different. Okay. But they're canceled. I mean, a lot of things, again, hopefully they pick them back up because a lot of good shows, that, like you said, a lot of good shows did get canceled, can't get picked up, but it's like, who's going to do that? That's the one. And who's going to put the money in Winning time? No, no, I'm just saying in general. Oh, I was about to say. No, winning times could have stayed because that was actually a good show and it had a great cast as well. Like, now we have spot on casting. Spot on casting. But... I do feel like many times can get picked up. I'm still waiting on Survivor's Remorse to come back. I'm still waiting on somebody to pick that show up. Well, and the thing is, you gotta remember the key thing, and this is my last point about this, like, you gotta remember Discovery bought out a lot of things that went through that, so they've been canceling a lot of stuff from the DC side of Max as well. That's true. So it's been, especially with, uh... Because Gotham Knights just got canceled and they only had one season. Well, I mean, that was gonna get canceled like the Batgirl movie that never released, but that's not a good thing. But that's because they're getting ready for uh, the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, the director. I can't think of his name right now, and I know his name. The guy that used to work for uh, Marvel, but yeah. now he's like one of the top people at DC. Yeah, I can't think of his name right now, and I'll put it in the I'll put it on the thing when I pop it up and make the video. But mm -hmm. he's over DC in the new universe, so hopefully they get it right. Yeah. I'm giving them hope, but that's barely in Because his first movie is going to be the Flash one, right? That's no, 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 no. Flash wasn't his first movie. Flash was the last movie. Flash and Aquaman are the last two movies to end off the original line. Okay. So he's about to do a new Superman movie. And is new, that what it is? That's okay. What it is. I thought that the new Flash movie that's coming out was like his debut. No, no, no. They was finishing off the last debut because the, they've been trying to get that so out. So he hasn't debuted anything with DC yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. And then he got a Batman and Robin movie, but it's Batman with Damian Wayne and his son, so that's going to be interesting too. Yeah, like his son was the main character on Gotham Knights. See? That's crazy. So hopefully And he was working, he was like teamed up with the Joker's daughter and like but Robin see, was the little girl from Raven's home. But see that's the thing though, and that's and she left Raven because of that. But no, I'm saying it's gonna be a younger Damien, so I'm here for that. Yeah, he's younger, all the Gotham Knights. It's probably the same boy. Hopefully. Hopefully we pray that. But to change the subject and to keep moving around, did you see City Girl JT promotion for beats last month? Now, what did you think about that? JT does no wrong in my eyes. I might be, uh... Oh, speak to peace. This is you. It, she's always been different. Look who she dates. She dates Lil Uzi. But... Still or... Yeah. No, they're still together. Oh, I know they're still together. I'm pretty sure they're still together. We'll find out. We'll put that up as well. We'll, we'll, we'll update y'all the next episode. Facts. Because uh, we're not talking about them dating. But she dates people like Lil Uzi. She hangs out with Lil Yachty. Like, JT's always been, like... Different in a good different. way. Different. Yeah, like... What's wrong with it? Well, because like, people... Meg the Stallion gets to dress up like anime all the time and nobody says anything. Well, because she know she found her niche. But the thing was, when JT got back last year, I was like, this was a, actually a fire ad commercial. Yeah, it like, was dope. Like, this was very creative. Even for her, I didn't see it coming. So for people to have backlash with her last month about it, and I'm mad that we didn't talk about what happened, kind of made me upset. But I understand the severity of the situation. So. JT's her own person. And, like, we can even get into that, like, because for the whole... I know you heard the Dojo album. I haven't listened to the city 
plays the Diddy album a lot. The songs I've heard from there are pretty good. I just haven't heard the Justin Bieber song. And I love when JB gets in his R&B bag. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I'll give you guys, I'll do my homework and actually just, there's a lot of albums that I haven't. Sexy Great has been a shot though. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. After my student was in, some of them are the to sub that actually song gets early in the morning. I can't listen to it. Still in the female rap game. Did you see the whole true li- true religion debate that's been going on lately? So mulatto, a lot of rap, right? Of course. She let me backtrack a little bit. So there was a blog, I forgot who it was, but they basically said that I Spice and Sexy Red are bringing true religion back. Like nobody was thinking about wearing true religion until they started wearing. dropping like just throwback photos from the past couple of years showing that Mm -hmm. she's been wearing true religion Mm -hmm. so now it's like this big old thing in the media about like mulatto is copying sexy red and ice spice and all this it's just a clothing brand why does it matter but see that's the thing especially with hype beast and the hype train is like this for example like sneakers like People yeah. ruin sneakers to market because certain shoes are not hot, but when a certain person wear them and they just skyrocket the price, who's really copying who? Exactly. So I get where you're coming from. It's just weird. I didn't, I didn't know that was happening. Yeah, that's a whole thing right now. That's, it's a lot going on right now. But let's get back onto the topic. Yeah, so one topic that before we get, before we leave the rap girls, um, remember Susan had her show here on, on your birthday weekend, right? Mm-hmm. Why was she at the game? Susan so, takes the game the next day. Yeah, because she can't, ironically, she can't. Oh, you saw her. Yeah, she just is I will shake my head, yes, for all those. BBL was well spent. Woo! BBL money well spent. Look, she can stay in use for a little bit longer, that's all I can say. I was going to say, the only celebrity I saw at a Jackson game was uh, Drea. Mm. Nah, they had, ironically, they had a, a whole bunch of influencers that game was just the same. Shout out to New Orleans Saints fans. Y'all brought me so much joy up that week. I did not want to leave work with that track. Hell. And speaking of football, since we're transitioning perfectly, yeah. So, when we was originally filming, well, when I originally did the script for this episode, Coach Prime was 3 0. Since we've been off, he just went 4 3. He lost, so he lost the four. What's Shadur doing? Shadur was actually. Pl- no, no, no. Shadur was actually playing, but. Okay. But, I'm going to get to that. The Oregon loss was homecoming. No, no, I'm sorry. The or- Oregon was the week before, but that was 42 to 6. We already knew that shit was coming. But the USC game during homecoming was a close-ass game. They lost by 7, but I can't fault them. I can fault them, but it's like, USC got their comeuppance this past week against Utah, so I ain't even tripping about that. Utah was actually a team. But the worst loss of fucking all, and I swear to God, was the loss to Stanford. He was up 29 nothing. How are you losing 29 and nothing? How you create the biggest blowout, the biggest fuck up of a blowout in school's history? How you do that? Like, I swear to God, we was at our pro fight house. I'm not gonna give no names or anything. We watched the game there. He was up 29 nothing. Oh, I know what day this was. Mm-hmm. And we came back here, minded off motherfucking business. And next thing you know, they were trying to something like, hey yo, these niggas about to lose. I'm like, what do you mean these niggas are about to lose? It's up 29 nothing. Almost worse than the Eagles losing to the Jets. Oh, uh, we don't get. Dad, oh, sorry, Dad. Sorry, Dad. Uh, nah, nah, we about to get on that shit next. Dad, change the channel. Nah, 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 nah. Run that shit back. We gonna run that back in a second because Travis Hunter just came back that game against Stefford. And to see after the Chiefs tried to call Ross thinking like that game. Even though we filmed that week, I wish we would have filmed the next week because I had shit to talk that week. I was like, how the fuck you gonna cheap shot a nigga after the play is over and then still stay in the game? Like, I see why the boy, I hate the condone death threats and I don't push that upon anybody. That boy's getting death threats because he put, he was an illegal move and you white. Like, you white taking a black player like that. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to my white subs. I love y'all. He was saying, and you white. And you, <laughs> and you did that to him after the play. Caucasian. Like, Unseasoned. I said what I said. I'm just saying that the play itself was unjustified. Like you didn't have to do a low blow like that. That's all. Yeah, he didn't have to do that. Like, bruh, especially driving back and seeing that game and at one o'clock in the morning, like that's church in the morning. Like, come on now. 
This is kind of mindset you gotta go into the house of the Lord with. <laughs> like, bro, I have to go peaceful. Be like, nah, bro. Nah, bro, I'm good. I'm gonna be peaceful today. Yeah, I, I am reforming right now. I am working on myself. But since we got a good 20 minutes in, I got one last topic to get on. Break. We gonna break and we readjust. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Damo. And don't forget DJ T Raw on the track. Yeah. Don't forget DJ T Raw on the track. His yeah. His birthday was months ago. His, his and y'all got the same month. Like, don't play him. And shout out to Gorilla Grodd as well. Y'all birthdays is all October babies. We get snow break because these October babies want to be labor than bumping and shit. Labor gang. But Valentine's Day went up in the 90s and 80s. Boy. I see, and that's why I'm glad. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's some good tea. Shout out to Flavor that one. But we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Yeah. yeah. Hey, welcome, welcome back. We are back from our break. Yes. Now, to continue forward, and we had, you know, a long break. Let's talk about homecoming season. Mm-hmm. Now, we just had TSU's homecoming before the filming of this episode. Yes. And PV's is after the we'll, we'll have a recap of PV's the next episode. The next episode. So we got the uh, Tuesday. So that's perfect. Um, how do you feel about Texas Southern homecoming? So I do have two notes. Go ahead. I personally did enjoy my homecoming. I had a really good time. The only thing I They wasn't even gonna originally have a concert until it's a Walker. Well, no, no, no. Um, a lot of people complained, and it was they, that's how they got Nio Chopper. Nio Chopper. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I feel like TSU always was gonna have Nio Chopper because they did the same thing with Boozy that one year. Like they kept saying we weren't gonna have anybody. They made their whole step show, and then Boozy came out at the end. But like, they didn't have any of that. Did they have a show? Up? No, they don't think they, they went through with it because it was quiet. I don't think they did. I don't think they did because it was supposed to be. Tailgate was supposed to end at 7, and the stroll off was supposed to go to 10. Yeah. But the, home, the tailgate ended up getting at, like, 11. Exactly. Like, yeah. I'm sorry if you guys didn't enjoy yourself. It was a vibe for me. I had a great time. My only complaint, and because I went to Sam Houston and U of H Street before, and it was hot as shit early in the day. It was hot. It so, was definitely hot. and for it to be that early, and for it to be that fucking hot, that's why my black ass waited until the sun started going down, because I refused to be frying like fried chicken with a bunch of liquor in my system. I feel like me and you got there at the right exact right time, because like, I refused to deal with the bullshit. But... My outfit was cute, though. Mm. 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 I'm going to leave that alone. But, but no, go- um, wait, back to TSU's yeah, back homecoming. Back to um, from a scale of 1 to 10, my experience, I will give it a 7. I can stand with that 7. I can truly stand with that what year was your best homecoming? You got mud coming. 15. When it stormed. Oh my god, Dazzy was here that year for that. I remember. That was your best homecoming? That was my one of my best. That's that was really one of my worst. That was one of my best. That was top two. That was top five. Maybe top three. I probably was only on campus for like an hour. No, I stayed. I was in the dorm. We, the after function was what made it even oh, better. Because okay. we were stuck at the school in the storm. Because 16 was a great year too. The year after. Um I think 17 was a good, the year I was Miss KTSU. That was also a solid year, but it wasn't in the top five. That was a good year. That was the year I wore the uh, the okay. And I would say honestly, not my Neo year homecoming, but the year after 14 was a solid year. My favorite one would have to be my first one right here. There, except I was there a few years before then, but 18, first year, first year, oh, that was, oh, that shit was like, look at free trees. So, those are my 
best years, but this year, it felt like 20, when I came back to work that year, it was 21. Yeah, it was 21. 21. And, I don't know, it just didn't feel like the crowd itself was watching it. I can see why you felt that way. Like, when we was there for the Friday stuff, it was like, these kids all come, all... Oh, know, so you went to the Yard Fest on Friday? I went to the Yard Fest. How was it? That's my point. It was mid. Like, there was barely, like... Because usually it feels like a, a family reunion at the... Uh, have you ever been able to walk through Yard Fest and not bump into somebody? In your past years, like, you know how crowded Yard Fest used to be. Mm-hmm. This was the first time I could make it through Yard Fest and be like, oh, damn. There's barely anything. Yeah, because I didn't even See, and that was my thing about TSU's homecoming. It was like the energy wasn't there. Do you feel like the energy wasn't there, or we're just getting old? Neither. Uh, no, not the set, not the later, the earlier. The energy wasn't there because the kids, the freshmen. I mean, the kids themselves were barely out there, but it was just barely any energy at all. No, I can see why you say that. Like TSU was in a really place right now. Yeah. Like, we, we don't have to get into the whole president. We're not going to. But you know. regulars at Howard, but for us, it was, like, something new, and they don't even do, like, that anymore, and so, seeing Howard's whole coming this past year was really nice, but I'll have to ask somebody that was there, how was it, because I went in four. I oh, went, no, I saw how it was. It was lit. They had Diddy. They not, had... But that's a normal thing for the celebrities to be there. Yeah, especially because the most a lot of celebrities went there. But I'm talking about just, like, the year I went was 15, no, 14, 14, because I went to, I was there with her, and so... Honestly, it was still, it wasn't even their best year, but it was the last year that everybody was really lit for everyone. For this year to be a good year for them, that was actually a, a good thing. So, and like other schools have performers that actually, you know, want to come and actually. At this point, part of this makes sense to me was, and we can move on to the next one coming. Okay. After this was, TSU. And then on, the, on top of you have Meg Thee Stallion. Meg Thee Stallion is currently doing that Flame and Hot campaign. Oh, yeah. And what was the main campaign that was being played at TSU's homecoming? Shuffling. The Flaming Hot campaign. Like a so, chick that's a Cheeto puff. I'm sorry, I'll have Cheetos back. I, have I don't know if it's the Flaming Hot uh, marketing team that dropped the bag, or TSU's marketing team that dropped the bag, or Meg Stallion's team that dropped the bag. I feel like a bag was dropped. Oh, facts. Because it was a perfect setup. Flaming Hot is doing all this stuff at her school. Facts. Why is she not performing? Oh, but she can perform for the final four. Dang. Which, I mean, is bigger, of course. But Flamin' Hot has already given you a bag. Like, I'm a big Megan fan. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, no, no, no. But to me, I, it just... Because people were at TSU, like, wait. Like, some people were waiting until the fucking night because they just thought Meg was going to come out because of the Flamin' Hot thing. Yeah, but no, I saw that coming. Like, once the, everything was said and done, even when we left, I felt like, yeah, that was cool. But to talk about another home for me, PVs is like coming up. What you was telling us earlier off camera, you feel like the way that Slack is set up for PB's homecoming is set up is not going to be a good look. It's not, because for PB, um, there's a whole lot dedicated to RVs. Yeah, I remember like that. that. But this year, they have that box locked off because they're using that for the Slack. Like, the Slack soccer, the Slack soccer championships, you know, at PB, the same day Ooh, at PB. Dodging them bullets easily. Fuck all that shit. I'm missing G-Ho, man. I'm so hurt. So, Thanos, Thanos Primal, and Land of Strange are not coming to do this homecoming, but don't worry, guys. I will try my hardest. She's better than all of us. I ain't gonna lie on that one. Mm-hmm. Of course you're not driving. That's why. But, since we're still in the college scene, before we get to the real sports, I just want to say one thing. I've been, like, I've been holding off on this. Why is football? 
actually been dropping down because you, you really sit there and think about it. They barely lost the UT. Mm-hmm. They beat U of H and they beat TSU. They pretty much run at Houston right now. And that crowd for the Rice. Rice. Okay. But the UT U of H game last week and that crowd, bro, I'm mad I didn't go because I really should have went. And I was not feeling it, but that was a game crowd. Like, you was lit. Like, San Houston and U of H was already UT and U of H? Oh, I should I, that's my one regret this football game. I've never been to a U of H football game. And, and I've been here for all, all, yeah, 10 years. I've never been to a U of H football game. I've been to a U of H homecoming before as an alpha no, I've been to a homecoming. No, <laughs> that's my point. I've been to a U of H homecoming as an alpha before I went to a TSU homecoming as an alpha. That's crazy. Yeah, they had it the same year. That's the same weekend. So that's my point. But since my co-host here does not want to make this point, I will make it for a later video. And when I'm back on I will do my congratulations. No shame to anyone, but I had the video up and, you know, it's there to be seen. But let's talk about baseball. I love my Astros. They got all the way there. And for the weirdest ALS series, ALS series, nobody won a game at home. No home First of all, how you let all the bases get there? That's not even big. That's not even part. Part, I'm getting that thing about it. Look at how the how the game was set up. Nobody that was at home, that was the home team, won the game. So that's why I was like, I had minimal faith, but I was like, I'll take the risk. But I just Mac is hurt somewhere right now. Oh, I'm hurt for him. It rained right after they lost when I was at the beach. Son. I like that's a tears from God right there. So I hope the Rangers do not choke, cause I'm a Cowboys fan, and we gonna get to that in a minute. But y'all got Arizona. A lot of people are, are mainly interested unless you're a real baseball fan, so I'm giving y'all the hope. I'm going to go Rangers and six. Rangers and six. Rangers and six. That's where, That's where I'm going. And the only reason I say that is because I feel like they're going to choke, but I have hope that somebody from Texas is bring back. So if you feel like they, oh, okay, I was about to say, you feel like they're going to choke, but you still put your money on them. I put my money on them, but only because Arizona, when I watched that Phillies game, Arizona really locked down Philly, and we didn't really want Philly to come in there anyway. It's not even worse. I don't put my on Philly, but I want a Texas team to two years ago. That might be the right year. That, I, it might be. I mean, that's besides the Mavericks. That's really all they got. Because, you know, I still have my little vendetta against the Astros, but, you know. Yeah, that's not a hit or that. That's that's top key right there. But let's, we, since we're still on sports, we're going to go to, you know, football. I'm going to start with the team I work with before the team I deal with. Okay. So the team I work with in Houston, Texas, have actually been doing really good. And I'm not going to talk shit because there's a Saints fan in the neighborhood. And, you know, I'm not going to do that because he don't want to be on camera. You know, that's not a hit on that. But y'all lost to both of them. Y'all lost to them both times at home and away. I don't know. People say they're going to the playoffs. I'm still skeptical because I have more. And the Texans are going to the playoffs? But I haven't worked a playoff game since Deshaun Watson was on the team. So I ain't tripping. A whole playoff game at that. So I'm not tripping. But I just want to see where they go. Because somehow, some way, they're making miracles out of a little spin of yarn, stretch of yarn. And it's either here nor there. Now, this is the part I'm going to hate most. My Cowboys, and I know y'all know how I feel about my Cowboys. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. No lies, no shit cut, no bullshit. We got clowned around. We are the laughing stock of the NFL. Why? Niners. You can't talk shit. Y'all lost to the Vikings. Y'all lost to Kirk Cousins. Shut up. Y'all lost to Cousins, cuz. No, no, I'm giving y'all y'all credit. But y'all lost to Cousins. Shut up. Damn. Who did y'all lose to? Shit, we lost to them. We lost to the 49 Not them. We lost to them. Niners. Y'all barely a nine at this point. Y'all barely an eight and some change losing to I'm Kirk. Not a ni- well, I used to be a Niners fan, but I'm not a Niners fan no more. Look, y'all lost to Kirk Cousins in prime time. That's the one game he is not supposed We're not to win. We're talking about the Rams right now. We're talking about the Cowboys losing to the 49ers. You're right. I'm how so- did y'all let that happen? It's not how we let that Explain it. it. I'm not going to explain it. No, explain it. Because you was talking about it, explain it. I'm going to talk shit because I knew we was going to lose, first of so all. So you walked in knowing you was going to lose to the Niners? Yes. Okay. You can ask that was horrible. I have no faith in my team. I'm a diehard Cowboys fan, but I'm going to keep it real. I treat the Cowboys like the Detroit Lions of the 90s. <laughs> if they get somewhere, they get somewhere. If they don't, they don't. I'm not going to lose sleep over it, but at the end of the... But as soon as y'all win, y'all be the most ignorant people. But you know, no, that be... No, no. I don't be ignorant. We... we, we see, this is why I wish we would film the... That other person. Yeah, the other person, yeah. 
I tell everybody we only beat bad teams. When we lost to the Cardinals, I was like, why? When we lost to the 49ers that bad, I was like, we need our ass whooped because we ain't getting nowhere. Not the way we playing. We playing like shit. We playing like dog shit. We're playing like the last piece of shit that you found on the earth, scooped that shit up, put it in the star, and made it look great. And I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. Unless we get some management changes, I don't trust my team. But I'm going to leave that at that. That's all I'm going to say. Y'all can leave a comment. You can, you can like, subscribe, all that shit. But <laughs> like, I keep comment, it subscribe, leave us your comments at the bottom, and we will respond to it. I right? respond quickly. Oh, shout out to Chris for uniform. You're wearing the jacket out here. It's a nice-ass jacket. I ain't going to lie. Shout out to the Phantom Hill bros out here. We, we appreciate y'all. But now that we're done with what we left off with, you can start with the cigar. You can start with the shoe. It's up to you. I will do the shoes. Now, Landon Strange is going to be talking about the shoe, but I will be modeling it for you. Please. So, ladies and gentlemen, my former teammate, my former track teammate, who I helped, you know, marry off and, you know, help with his wedding, he got up me the corporate Nike Airship Player Edition. Turn it to the back so they can see. That says, got him. Yeah, there we go. Bring it up slowly. Pull it back. You'll see it. There we go. It says, got him. Now, that teal colorway, I ain't gonna lie, is beautiful, and the packaging itself is nice. Like, it's, it's like, it's just like sweet. And leather, and I'm like, okay, I haven't worn those yet. They ain't even been in my house yet. That's the sad This is what I thought was my birthday present. She thought again. Like, that, that, like, and the sad part is they're going for below retail right now. So that's a beautiful thing. Like, it's a nice shoe. Mm -hmm. And for people who don't know about the sneaker, like, the airships were the original shoe that Jordan wore before he got into the ones. And that they brought him back, especially after years of people waiting for him. Oh, cool. oh, yeah, it's the story. In, I want to say Milwaukee, and I might be wrong, but I feel like it's in, it's in Milwaukee, but they actually did the shoe collab, and I was like, the, before they even released, like, the actual shoe, I was like, I'm getting a shoe because it's like, and I'm mad because Thanos Primal has the other shoe, but he won't let me use it for footage, so that's not even or there. That shoe right there is nice, and it's more below reach, and you can easily get it for under 150 right now, off the market, so that is a win. If you mean, sounds like a win. Like, if you need a kick for just a nice colorway, especially with the change of the brothers, that's where you go. Corporate Nike Air Shoe. And especially when they've been dropping a lot of sneakers on the Nike app. So be on the lookout. I've been dropping shorts for everything on the Nike app. Especially Chris Paul has the shoes that dropped the other day. That was fire. And he finally got a nice pair of shoes after a motherfucker. Bleep, 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 bleep. So that's not him on there. One more spin. One more spin on the Gotham. You know, it's a beautiful packaging. Like I said, I try to bring shoes to the show, and we got a bunch of shoes around the set, so that's more shoes to the premiere. But now, ladies and gentlemen. Cigar review. The cigar review right here. Let me turn the name so I can see it. On the other side, other side, the other side. there you go. See, now, I ain't gonna lie, the reason why the cigar is so small is because, and I'll put the name on the show, but the reason why the cigar is so small is because I'll sample it for y'all for the show. And I will say this. You need something with dark liquor or a nice, you know, smoking, you know, relaxation. Take that and use it because it's a great smoke, especially when you're having a long day and you really don't want to be bothered with nobody and you ain't got anything else. Take that, it's a nice price cigar, especially if you get it from Briar Shop or a Sweet Lips if they still sell it. Like, you still sell it. Gonna ask where can you get this? Like, you can get it at Briar Shop, you can get it at most of the known cigar shops like Monte Cristo, but I don't know if Sweet Lips still sell it anymore. Nice cigar, great smoke. We have another one for next week, and it's also something enjoyable. Now, since we wrapped up all that we needed to do, you'll probably most likely see us in two weeks. Yes. We need our breaks, and I need my time to get some work done as well. Oh, shit. DJ T. Brawl in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Happy belated birthday to you as well. I already, get, I already sung y'all a birthday. You, this jacket, run the jacket. You on the mic. Run the jacket. Who's the vibe? Oh yeah, it's uniform brand. It's by uh, uh, Full League, you know, uniform brand. Is there something else like that? Uh, yeah, it's something like that. Before we got closing remarks, um, you remember one of our guests, uh, two, five, uh, five, two, that shot one of our first season enders with DeAndre? Yeah. So he has, uh, today, right now, he's actually doing a live show. 
Uh-huh. And he asked me to come. I was like, I would, but I got to film mine. I've been behind on my stuff. So I sent him my blessings and I sent him my wishes. And to get her high. Yes. Like, he's doing this live show right now with this other group. And remember, I studio I showed you. Yeah. So I sent him my congratulations. You know, hopefully the show's going smooth. It's called Spooky Hours. So we can get to our closing remarks. And I think the lady should go first. So no more get there. You can close us out and I'm going to come back with a piece at the end. Alright you guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. The best month of the year, October, is also also coming to a close. You guys make sure that you guys stay grounded. Let's get ready for 2024. Well, the year's basically over now that October is about to be over. Oh good lord. So <laughs> in the words of Thanos Primal, check on your friends, check on your family, and for me personally, this is Landon Strain talking. We are dealing with a lot of conflict all over and all around us, and we are truly stressed and tired. But I do want to send my prayers to everyone who's also went in this conflict at God because it has really been rough. And when I see the video on uh, X, so-called Twitter, um, it breaks my heart because it's like, you're already going through a lot and you never know what you have until you see somebody else going through a lot, especially when the dog on um, the video was, was too afraid to eat because everything that's going on and everybody's supporting, like, Free Palestine. I'm, I'm with that because... We deal with enough as it is. Like, we deal with enough conflict. So make sure you're checking on not only yourself, but other people as well, because you never know who's going to need it. All right, y'all. With that, like, comment, and subscribe to Sneakers and Stogies. We'll catch y'all in two weeks. Yerk. Wait, wait, wait. We didn't close it out. You closed it out horribly. Whatever. So this is Landon Strange. Damo did that. And we are signing out. Yerk. Yerk.